Hey, feel I'm in the mood for a switch up. I hit the function, hit the rose right till I hiccup. I hit the stage and leave with money that's a stick up. She picture perfect, so I told him I'm Well, we're on the road, starting another camping trip. Weather's looking good. Nothing like camping in the sunshine. Well, welcome to a great British camping trip. It's raining a lot. It can't all be sunshine and rainbows, can it? But that doesn't matter when you've got some steaks sizzling. Sizzle, my little babies. Sizzle. Oh, yes. Oh, and the other thing that didn't quite go to plan was I unpacked my camera, turned it on. I haven't brought my SD cards. So I cannot use my DSLR camera at all for this filming trip. So it's all going to be shot on my phone. What I'm filming on now should be a challenge, should be interesting. So we'll see how it all turns out, hopefully okay. So this video is all about seven autumn fragrances that I feel like I should be wearing more this autumn. Stay tuned. So it's the morning after the rain, came down quite heavy last night and we've got a bit of a muddy pitch going on here. But the forecast today is to be dry, cloudy but dry. We can deal with that. We've got a coffee on the go. I think I can hear a river somewhere nearby, so let's uh, let's get going. And yep, yeah, that's our tent. I did sleep in a circus big top last night. <sighs> Not my choice. <laughs> so I wanted to talk to you about some fragrances that I haven't worn all that much yet but I think autumn is going to be the season that I can start to wear these fragrances more and they can really start to shine. They're all designer fragrances. Some I've had for a few months, some I've not had for very long at all, but I've gathered them all together and I'm just gonna let you know the experience I've had with them so far. So rather than this being a video about fragrance recommendations, it's more a work in progress exploration of certain fragrances that I think should wear very nicely as we transition into the cooler months. So I'm just about to fall down that hill. Let's retake that. And who knows, maybe some of these might end up in my top 10 autumn list. All right, the first fragrance I'm gonna to talk to you about is a 1990 release from Chanel. This is pretty famous. I uh, only recently added this to my collection. So far, I'm enjoying it. It's egoist. So this is citrus woods, some florals, some tobacco. It smells a little dated to me. I don't think it's outdated. It just smells like more of an old style type of fragrance. To me, it's got this muskiness, it's got this animalic muskiness, which I associate with those kind of 70s, 80s powerhouse type fragrances. I don't think there's any animalic or musky notes listed in here, but that's what I get. I also get a bit of uh, booziness. There's some amber seeds in here, and that can sometimes cause this uh, lovely boozy accord in fragrances. And I do get that from this. It's a beautiful fragrance. I really like this. The tobacco in here, I think, should make this one work very nicely in the autumn. Really looking forward to wearing this. I've had two full wearings so far. Uh, let me know if you like this fragrance and if you think it's a decent one for autumn. I just realized I
So this next one is a fragrance that I'd heard a lot of positive talk about, but I've only just recently added it to my collection. I've had two full wearings of this and I've loved it each time. From Narciso Rodriguez, this is for him. This was released in 2007, it's the Eau de Toilette. In this one, we've got musk, amber, violet leaf, and patchouli. And to me, this comes off as a dark, brooding, melancholic type of smell. I get a dampness from it. So I think this would be perfect to wear on a wet autumn day. I love the surprising artistic direction that this one takes for a designer fragrance. I think this would be great to wear dressed up in a suit and you want to make a bold statement but you still want something that is mass appealing. And I think this grey bottle, this isn't the colour of the juice it's painting on the inside of the bottle, but this grey colour perfectly represents the juice inside. Dark, damp, but somehow very pleasing. This is one of the very interesting features that we find in this area of the United Kingdom. We're here in the Yorkshire Dales and this is a structure that particularly my American viewers may not be too used to seeing. What happens with this is they take various stones of different sizes, they layer one on top of the other to create this vertical structure that we refer to as a wall. Now it's a wonderful thing, they stretch all the way across the country, it's, it's pretty astonishing. The thing that really amazes me is the attention to detail because after they finish the wall they then come back and install this intricate um, moss system. Uh, impressive. The next one is from Jean-Paul Gaultier. This is a flanker of La Malle, a 2016 release. It's La Malle, Essence de Parfum. This one has citrus, lavender, cardamom, leather, vanilla. Doesn't smell too close to the original La Malle, although I think because of the sweetness and the lavender, I get just the tiniest little hint. I don't get a lot of citrus. I don't get a strong leather, but it is really nice and smooth. Maybe coming from Tonka Bean, maybe coming from the vanilla but this one definitely has more of an oriental feel than a fougere feel. I really enjoy this one. It doesn't smell like a generic designer. I think it's definitely one of the better Lamal flankers and I think it's gonna work great in the autumn. Okay, we're gonna do a river crossing review here. I don't think this has ever been done before. Someone's gotta do it, so why not me? Um, the sound of the river is gonna go really loud as we cross here, so apologies for that if it does go a little bit loud. So the next fragrance I'm gonna talk about is from Galan, and I really feel like I didn't give this one enough of a chance when I first smelled this. It wasn't what I wanted it to be, it wasn't what I expected it to be. It's got tobacco, rum, leather, almond. It's part of the Lom Ideal line. Uh, it's Lom Ideal Extreme and now that I've put a little bit of a distance between now and my first impressions and now the uh, temperatures are a little bit more appropriate for this one I'm looking forward to, to resetting, giving this one uh, a bit more of a wear through the autumn and uh, hopefully I will, I will enjoy this more than what I did when I first smelled it because it is a nice fragrance, I just, I just want to love it more and we go across the river without falling in.
It's always nice to warm yourself up with a bit of rum when you've been in an ice cold waterfall. This fragrance is a 2014 release from Dior. In here we've got suede, licorice root, rum, vanilla and violet leaf. This is Dior Fahrenheit Le Parfum. So you get a little bit of that gasoline accord in this which we get more strongly in the original EDT. There's a little bit of a connection here to the original and it's this slight gasoline accord that just works so fantastically well with the rum and the vanilla. This is going to be a great fragrance to wear through the autumn. It's smooth, it's warming, it's comforting, it's crowd pleasing. This uh, actually is in danger of becoming one of my favourite designer fragrances. The next fragrance is a 2007 release from D Squared. In this one we've got watery notes, incense wood and fur resin. It's called Intense He Wood. Despite the name, this is a very aquatic scent. Not aquatic in terms of that salty blue marina cord that we find in a lot of modern designer releases. This reminds me more of a tropical blue lagoon, somewhere hot, surrounded by trees. I thought this was gonna be a great autumn scent very appropriate for autumn being intense wood but I actually think this will be a great summer scent nevertheless I'm going to give this some wearing through the autumn and we'll see how it goes So I found myself a nice little wind tunnel here but I just had to film with this in the background because it looks awesome. So the next fragrance I'm talking about is from Dolce & Gabbana. This is a 2015 release. In this one we've got leather, juniper berries, rum, incense, myrrh. Sounds great right? This one is velvet exotic leather. I bought this one earlier in the year I think back in February. I gave it one or two full wearings, really enjoyed the scent, but felt the performance wasn't that good, so I'm willing to give this one a little bit more of a chance. Scent-wise, it reminds me of Dolce & Gabbana's The One. It's a beautiful scent, really gorgeous scent, but I think it's a little thicker, a little richer than The One, possibly because of the, the leather and the incense and the resins in here. So I do think the notes really lend themselves to the season of autumn, so I'm looking forward to wearing this over the coming months. Found a cave. I thought this would be an appropriate location to give me some shelter from the wind so I can close out this video without too much wind interference. So there we go. My first ever video shot entirely on my phone. Uh, trusty Samsung Galaxy. S20. I think it's worked out all right. I don't expect it to be perfect, but let me know what you think. Maybe I'll, I'll do some more like this. It's a bit easier than lugging all the camera gear around. And there are my seven fragrances that I'm looking forward to wearing this autumn. This wasn't my top fragrances to wear for autumn. These are just fragrances that I'm looking forward to, to wearing more and I think will be appropriate as we get into autumn. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked visiting all these different locations with me. I, I love filming from all these different places. Remember, keep tuning into FM, keep smelling good, and I'll see you in the next video.
we're all packed up and sadly this is the video that we say goodbye to today we've had Dave for six years we've just outgrown him the girls have grown up we're looking for a bigger van so we're, we're selling him so thanks Dave for all the years of fun camping adventures have a good trip God bless and good night hey feel I'm in the mood for a switcher I hit the function hit the rose right till I hiccup I hit the stage and leave with money that say stick up she picks a perfect so I told him I'm a flicker Bill I'm in the mood for a change